It was a fairly standard Friday evening at GameStop. I'd somehow convinced my dad to buy me a video game. So, with a regretful glance at his wallet and a sigh, he led me into the store. I ran from one game to the next, indecisive over which one I should get. Most of the new games seemed tasteless and dull to me, so I went to check out some of the less recent games. Still, none that pleased me. That's when my eye caught the games that were on sale. I ran over onto the sale bin and found Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of the Sky sitting atop all of the others. I gasped. I'd been wanting this game for so long. Light reflected off the cover and it shone like a bright blazing star. It seemed to be calling out to me, like it wanted me to buy it oh so badly. And I did. Eagerly I picked up the game and ran over towards my dad asking if he could buy it for me. Seeing that it was half off, he happily agreed. Both of us now content, we bought the game and drove home. The whole way back, I couldn't stop staring at the game case. I wanted to play it so much. I'd never owned a Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game before, but I'd wanted one for so long. And now, I finally had it in my grasp. I had read every word of the instruction manual at least three times by the time we pulled into our driveway. I hurriedly jumped out of my car and ran to my room. In no time at all, I found my DS and popped the game card in. I impatiently waited for the DS to load. Once the opening sequence started, I let our little fangirl squeal. It was much more amazing than I thought it'd be, and I hadn't even started playing yet. Once the title screen was loaded, I took a moment to stare and admire the beauty of the art. I dreamed that one day, I would be talented enough to create such a marvellous pixel masterpiece. After I was finished cooing over the artwork, I started the game. I gasped even more when I saw more luxurious artwork displayed. After savouring every little detail, I clicked New Adventure, the only option available. It took me to the personality quiz that decided which Pokemon you would be, which I was kind of expecting. It asked for my gender. I chose female since I was a girl after all. I wanted a Vulpix. I was a Vulpix freak, just like many other Pokemon fangirls and I would not accept any other star. The first time around, I answered the questions honestly, believing that I had the personality of a Vulpix. The results came in. I was a Squirrel. Yuck. How could I possibly be a Squirrel? Without hesitation, I reset my DS. I skipped through the intro, this time not stopping to admire the art. I went straight back to the personality quiz. Okay. I'll just do this again, and I'll be sure to get a Vulpix. I answered the questions truthfully again, believing the first time there was some sort of mistake. The results rolled in again. I was a squirrel. Again? I furiously reset my DS again, quickly skipping through everything again, and I went back to the quiz. I'll just answer everything at random. Let's see if I get a squirrel then. I answered all the questions, even without looking at them. This time, I really didn't care if I didn't get a Vulpix. I just wanted something else besides Squirtle. The results came in for the third time. Squirtle. Gah! I shut off my DS and pouted. I wasn't going to play through my dream game as a blue turtle. I wanted to be a majestic flaming fox. That's when it hit me. Oh yeah, I'm such an idiot. I ran into my computer room and opened up the internet. I clicked on the address bar and typed in the man's best virtual friend, Google. How to get Vulpix in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of the Sky. Enter. I said the words aloud as I typed them onto the search engine. I sighed with relief as I saw the answer to my problem sitting right before my eyes. I clicked on the first result, like I always do. Okay. Answer the questions with these answers and you'll get Vulpix as your star. Alright. I went to get my Nintendo DS from my room and brought it into the computer room. Honey, me and your father are going to town for a while. Will you be alright by yourself for a few hours? My mother called to me from the kitchen. I'll be fine, I shouted back. Okay, we'll see you in a little while. I heard a door shut as my parents left. I didn't care if a meteor was crashing to the earth. All I was focused on at that moment was Vulpix. 
I merrily answered the questions according to what the internet said, excited that I would finally get to play a game as one of my favourite Pokemon. If this game lets me get a Haunter as one of my team members, then I'll be set. I mumbled to myself as I answered the questions. For the fourth time, the results came in. Yes! I shouted victoriously as the Vulpix icon appeared. <laughs> fourth time's the charm, I said to myself as I walked back to my bedroom. The game led to the next screen where I got to choose my partner. I chose a male Shinx, for I thought the idea of a Vulpix ex Shinx couple was too adorable to pass up. I proceeded to name him Shadow in honor of Shadow the Luxray, my main Pokemon in Pokemon Diamond. From this point on, I didn't know what to expect. I had made sure not to read any spoilers on the storyline. I wanted to be surprised at what would happen to me in game. And I sure as hell was. After I'd selected and named my partner, Stag formed on the screen for a split second, but it was over as soon as it started. I didn't really notice or pay any attention to the strange incident. I just wanted the game to start already. After taking a brief moment to load, the game started up. My Vulpix was lying on a beach at sunset. Nothing unusual there, but something else made me catch my breath. My Vulpix looked as if it was beat up and dying. Bruises and scratches covered the poor sprite as it lay in a pool of blood. What? Why is there blood in a Pokemon game? I whispered to myself. There was never blood in any Pokemon games. Then, instead of worrying and getting suspicious like I should have, I got a little excited. Maybe Nintendo has finally decided to take Pokemon to the next level. A Shinx started to walk by my Vulpix, which I assumed was Shadow. But there was something strange about his sprite. Instead of blue and black, he was white and dark grey. Oh, our partners get to be a special colour. Oblivious to the obvious warnings that something was up with this game, I started to giggle. And this game was much more exciting than I thought. When Shadow noticed my Vulpix, his sprite appeared shocked and ran over towards mine. A text box from appeared. Oh no. Oh no 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 no. He quickly walked up to my Vulpix and dragged her away as the screen faded to black. When the screen came up again, my Vulpix was alone in a dark cave with a fire in front of her. She stood up and stretched, then appeared to wince in pain and fell down shivering. Shadow then came back, a berry in his mouth, and dropped it once he saw my Vulpix was awake. He ran over towards my Vulpix and then a text box appeared. Please, lay down, don't move, don't make any noise at all, be as still and quiet as you can or you and me both will regret it. My character stopped shivering. Good. Now don't dare move a muscle. I shivered at how dare and muscle were bold and italic. My partner seemed mean. He then walked over to the berry, picked it up, and brought it back to my Vulpix. Chew this slowly, and make as little noise or movement as possible. My Vulpix began to slowly eat the berry. After a few seconds, she had finished. Good job. Now, quietly, whisper your name to me. Oh, and please don't be who I just know you are. Please, 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 some miracle be someone else. I found it odd how my partner's tone changed mid-speech, but I didn't really care. I found it amusing that he had a split personality. A screen came up where I could select the letters to type in my name. M-Y-R-A. I proudly said the letters aloud as I typed in the name, Myra. I felt proud of myself. I would come up with that name myself, which I'd most likely heard from somewhere else before. But I didn't care. I pressed enter and the screen faded to black. I expected the screen to open back up to the cave, but instead more static showed up. This time it stayed there for about two seconds, and seemed to force me to take notice of it this time. I wondered if my DS was starting to screw up. I did have it for many years and used it almost every day. But the stack faded away, and I moved the thought to the back of my mind. Once the stack was gone, 
Gain was back in the cave with Myra and Shadow. My Vulpix looked up at Shadow and slowly whispered her name to him. Shadow appeared extremely shocked and jumped backwards. M Myra? He then regained control of himself and walked back up towards Myra. Yes. I shouldn't have got my hopes up so high. It seemed that his icon that appeared next to his text box had a tear on it. He stood there for a moment, staring at Myra. My Vulpix opened her mouth as if she was about to talk, but Shadow slammed his paw down hard on her muzzle. I told you not to dare talk. Myra started shivering and appeared that she would cry when Shadow apologized. I'm, I'm sorry. Stop moving. Please stop. She'll hear you. I said stop. He started to charge up an electric attack and Myra immediately became still as a stone. After a moment, to see if Myra would move again, Shadow stopped his attack and sat down. His sprite seemed on the verge of crying. P please, don't move. Don't talk. Don't speak. Don't do anything. Please, help me. Then, Shadow stood up and started walking out of the room. I swear to Arceus, you better not move while I think of something. Something. Hopeless. My partner went off the screen and left my character all alone. I dared not click any buttons, afraid that I might accidentally make Myra move. I was scared that something really bad would happen. Shadow seemed pretty serious about the me not doing anything. It became quite dull once nothing occurred after a minute or two, so I assumed that I was supposed to do something other than just lay there. But how can I do anything without moving? I then figured that if I press the start button, it wouldn't make my character move. So, I did so. First option I clicked on was items, because I wanted to see if my Vulpix came with anything. She had one item. Chains. I clicked on the info. These chains were found wrapped around your neck. You don't remember how you got them, but you can't take them off. It didn't do a great deal of anything important. So I clicked back and looked through all the other star options, but found nothing else of interest. Shadow immediately came back, but he walked slow, like each step was giving him pain. Eventually, he stopped right in front of Myra. Tears were falling down his sprite's face. Stay still. Close your eyes. Don't move. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't want to do this, but it'll be all over with soon. He started to charge up an attack that looked deadly. Lightning sparked from his paws and lit up the whole room. Myra appeared shocked. Don't move. Don't, please. I promise it will only hurt for a second. The lightning grew brighter and Shadow started to slowly step towards my Vulpix. Myra stood up. I said don't move. P please, don't do it. Stop. With a great leap, Myra jumped over the fire and raced off the screen. You fool, Myra! Come back! Shadow chased off after my Vulpix. Once he ran off the screen, everything faded to black and the stack came back again but a little longer than last time. I could have swore I saw a very morbid looking squirrel flash for a brief second in the stack, but I just thought it was my imagination getting the better of me. Finally, things are starting to get good. Once screen came back, Myra was in the middle of a dungeon. I was finally going to get to start the game. Something seemed odd about the cave though. It was dark, crimson red with chains and other torture equipment lined up against the walls. Skulls lit on the floor. I felt a little uneasy now. I didn't really think this kind of stuff was really fit for a Pokemon game. But I kept playing anyways. After walking for a couple of steps, I found a Pokemon. It was a white and grey Raptor that limped with each step. It seemed as if it was in pain, and it looked shocked once it spotted me. It then became startlingly scary and started walking towards Myra as if it had only one intention, and it would do anything to achieve it. Kill. Being one of the most common and annoying Pokemon in the series though, I figured I'd take it out in one hit. 
When it reached me though, it proved to be a challenging foe. It didn't deal much damage on me, but it took a whole 5 turns to kill it off. Even though I hadn't played Mystery Dungeon before, I knew that I was dead if I ran out of PP for my moves, as I had no way of restoring it. Thankfully, there weren't many other Pokemon, but as I went through each floor, the scenes got more and more disturbing. Soon, Pokemon body parts started appearing on the torture equipment. The skulls appeared to have bits of flesh still clinging onto them. Bloodstains became frequent on the floors and walls. Each Pokemon I ran to was stronger than the last and more intent on killing me. After what seemed like an eternity, I made it to the final floor, but not before the static appeared again. It was longer than the last, about 7 seconds, and I swear, I saw a morbid squirrel smiling at me again. Except this time, it was much more clear and vivid. I, I must be just imagining things. I was beginning to become very unsettled, but I kept pushing onwards. I loved scary things like this, but there was still something more to the whole situation that gave me this odd feeling. Myra was in the middle of a large crimson red room. Many skulls were strewn across the floor, but that was it. You idiot Myra! I finally found you! Shadow came running up from behind Myra. She quickly turned around and came face to face with her partner, who had ceased charging his attack, but quickly started again. You can't escape now. Stay still. Thank me. Please. This will hurt a lot less than what she will do. Now stay still and die. I couldn't control Myra. And even if I could, it would have been of no use. There was nowhere left to run. What kind of game is this? My partner's gonna freaking kill me? At this point, I was just utterly irritated. Shadow's lightning attack kept glowing brighter and brighter until the light hurt to look at. This will hurt, but only for a moment. Now please, hold still while- while, while, while. The screen started to get static again, but I could still see Myra and Shadow. Too late. I could hardly see Shadow stop his attack, as the screen became less visible by the second. Everything was just all static. And then, in the middle of all the static, came that squirt again but only more horrifying now that I could see it clearly, and more than just for a brief second. His flesh was ripped off at parts, exposing internal organs and bones. Blood flowed out of the numerous gashes along its body. Its shell was cracked open, a vile bubbling green goo pouring out. Its tail was very long and torn, just like the rest of its body. Its tail curled around a dagger at the end. That's not even the worst. Its eye sockets were much too large. The eye themselves were shrunken, but still had a heart-piercing gaze. They were red and seemed to stare out into your very soul. The top of its head was cracked open, exposing its still pulsing brain, even more blood gushing out of that. It had razor-sharp teeth, its grin stretching off the edge of its face. You can't escape who you truly are. A high-pitched voice emanating from the DS. Couldn't think straight. I wanted to turn away from the morbidly horrific image, but my eyes were forced to keep staring. I am you. Preacher said in a more soothing but still blood-chilling voice. Then, the screen cut to black. I hadn't realized I'd been holding my breath the whole time. So I let it out and started heavily breathing. Sweat was pouring down my face. I wiped it off my shirt sleeve. My thoughts were still messed up after seeing such a disturbing scene. I'm not done yet. The heart stopping voice returned as the screen suddenly came back. Myra was in the middle of a dark grey cave, filled with surprisingly realistic Pokemon corpses scattered everywhere along with more bones. Everything was white, black, and grey, except for Myra and the blood scattered all around the room. I thought the Squirtle was going a bit overboard with all these dead Pokemon everywhere, but then I realized, I don't have to deal with this crap. I quickly pressed the button to turn my DS off, but it wouldn't work. I'm not finished with you yet. 
The screeching voice that sounded like someone scraping chalk on board came back. I tried to turn my volume down, but it wouldn't work either. You're going to listen to me, like it or not. The way the squirrel said not made my blood turn to ice. It sounded like a demon was speaking to me. Wouldn't be surprised if one was. I had no choice but to keep playing the game. I'd only walked one step when one of the dead Pokemon started shaking and then stood up. It looked like a zombie Meryl and it took a step towards Myra. Soon, another corpse rose. A Poochiena. Soon, all of the bodies were regaining life and swarming around my poor Vulpix. Thankfully, they went down in just one hit, but it was hard to fend off so many of them. Just as I was about to run out of PP for all my moves, the last zombie fell. I quickly got Myra off of that floor before they were able to get up again. Instead of going to the next floor, Myra stepped out onto what looked like ancient ruins. Everything was still in white and grey though. I walked around trying to find something that could heal me, but to no avail. Then the dread static returned. I braced myself to encounter the horrid squirrel again, but it never appeared. Instead, the static would appear and disappear. In the brief moments where I could see the screen normally, Shadow had come back. He appeared beat up and worn down. Blood streaks were left where he had walked. Myra... I... He was actually talking through the speakers and didn't use a text box. But Stag was cutting him off. For your own good, must kill you. It's better than quick and easy death. You sorry. Through the Stag, I could see him charge up that attack again. This time, it looked more powerful than it had before. He then leapt at Myra and struck her. I reeled back in pain, screaming as he hit Myra. It not only affected my Vulpix. But I felt the pain too. I fell off the bed screaming at the top of my lungs. I could feel electricity scorching through my veins. Why did I have to play this game when my parents weren't at home? The pain was unbearable, but it was over in a few seconds. I gasped and clutched my chest, struggling to breathe. My body ached all over, but I reached my DS. I needed to see what happened next. The static was gone. But I wished it would still been there, so I wouldn't have had to see the scene that laid before my eyes. Shadow was sliced neatly in half, a bleeding mass lying on the floor of the ruins. Myra was charred black. She gasped and ran over to him. He looked up towards her. I'm sorry, Myra. I failed. His voice still spoke through the speakers. He gasped in pain and then laid his head down, unmoving. Tears started flowing down my cheeks. Even though he had tried to kill me, I knew it was to save me from the suffering that that cursed squirrel. I took a moment's grief for my lost friend. Now, I awaited my fate. A low laughter started to emit from the speakers. So low, it was almost inaudible. It suddenly slowly started to get louder and louder and louder until it was so loud my ears were aching. Then it stopped abruptly. Something flashed by Myra at lightning speed, wounding her. I fell backwards as I felt the blow too. Then it flashed by again, wounding her, wounding me. This repeated several times until it felt as if I was about to really die. Myra laid on the floor of the ruins, shivering. Time to finish this. The lightning struck Myra and it kept flowing, but I didn't notice. I was face down rolling on the floor in pain. This is only a start, a voice chimed in. Only worse will come, another joined. Once you're dead, you'll be mine. As each new voice came in, I felt more and more pain. Once you're rotting in my hell, You'll wish you could die. The pain was reaching such an extreme that I could lose consciousness, but just not enough for me to faint. Almost there, just 
A loud static noise cut off the voice and the torment. I rolled over, tears streaming down my face onto the carpet. After taking a minute to regain control of myself, I reached for my DS. It looked like a cutscene was playing. The morbid squirrel was laying on its back, chains wrapped around its neck. N no! A very high-pitched screech of protest emitted from the squirrel, and then it slowly started to turn into acid. What little was left of its flesh was melted into a green bubbling goo, its bones and organs along with it. Its soul-piercing eyes were the last to dissolve, giving me one last glare. The screen turned to the top half of Shadow's body. He was struggling to stay alive. The life was slowly being drained away from him. Myra ran over and nuzzled his head, tears falling down her face and mine too. I... I guess I... did save you... after all. He reached up to lick Myra's face, but it took too much strength, and he fell down and collapsed onto the ground. He didn't stir again. Good goodbye, Shadow, I whispered to myself. Goodbye, Shadow, Myra repeated. Weariness from all the pain finally took its toll, and everything went to black. When I woke up, I was lying in bed. I got up and stretched, but quickly stopped as the pain returned. Then the memories came back. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Squirtle, Shadow, nearly dying- My DS! Despite the pain still great, I leapt out of bed and searched for my DS. I found it lying on my desk, turned off. I turned it on and saw Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Explorers of the Sky was still in there. Without thinking, I selected it. Everything went as normal, but my save file was gone. Knowing I could be risking my life again, I clicked on new game. It skipped the personality quiz and showed my Vulpix laying on the beach at sunset, not bleeding this time. Shadow walked by, but he was his normal colours. The game then proceeded as it normally should. After playing it for a few minutes to see if anything strange would happen, I found nothing. I saved the game and sighed in relief. That Squirtle was finally gone, and I wouldn't have to get a new Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game. I got up and started to walk around the house, seeing if my parents were back from their trip in town yet. After searching through every room and finding nothing, I started to worry. It was late at night, and they should have been back by now. I walked into the kitchen and grabbed a brownie as a late night snack. While munching on it, I decided I'd just go back to bed and that they would be back in the morning. I slowly started to realize that it was getting harder and harder for me to breathe. Soon, I was choking and I was struggling to get a breath of air. I went to the sink and quickly turned the water on. I grabbed a glass and filled it with water and gulped it down hurriedly. It did nothing to ease the choking. I then realized that my neck was itchy too, and that it was kind of hard to walk. I ran to the bathroom and looked in the mirror. My neck was wrapped in blood-stained chains. My eyes widened with horror. I pulled and tugged at the chains to try and tear them off, but it was no use. I ran out of the bathroom and tried to get out of the house. Maybe someone could help me. But all the doors were locked. I tried to open the windows, but they were all bolted shut. Then I backed up and ran into the glass at full speed, but it bounced me back like I was nothing. I laid on the floor moaning in pain. I felt something drip onto my clothes. I looked up, knowing what I was to face. In the dim moonlight floating in through the window, I could just make out my worst nightmare, standing right on top of me. You should have just accepted who you are. His sick grin widened and lightning struck. Thank you for listening to the end. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to click that like button. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon to make sure you never miss a story.